and tumbled probably a good 30 feet, but his backpack hit a tree. So it kind of like, like abruptly stopped him. And if he didn't have that backpack, that probably would have hurt a lot. <laughs> was, he, what, was he wearing jeans? That was a jeans time, my friend. Uh, that's why. That's where I was wearing khakis, man. Yeah. All right. You leave the jeans and the khakis out of this. All right. <laughs> because those were the times. Did you, what you wear when you first started out? Khakis. Okay. It was because of the pockets, right? Yeah. Yeah, they were, I, like car, they were like cargo pants. Yeah, yeah, I had some Jinko jeans. <laughs> yeah, I just figured I got to carry some extra stuff. I better wear cargo pants with my sneakers. Exactly, exactly. So. Wherever you go in the Catskill, you could look down and imagine glaciers below you. I think the weather challenges on this incident were particularly difficult. Whereas Panther Mountain is totally opposite. It's a mountain on top of a crater. It is really the development of New York State. Catskill did not respond to that. Welcome to Inside the Line, the Catskills. Have you ever... I've never have, used this, John. Have you ever done a podcast before? <laughs> never, never. This is it's my first time. <laughs> what do you? So, uh, what are you having to drink, John? I have um, red wine right now, but later on, I'm going to be having a tall boy of triple X. Triple X. What's that? It's Molson. It's a Molson beer. I have not seen it in stores in many, many years. I saw it yesterday, so I grabbed it. Is this an old uh, young and days kind of thing, kind of like the Steel Reserve? <laughs> yes, actually, when I was a department manager of snacks <laughs> in uh, in Walmart, and then also covered the alcohol, I ordered an end cap of this stuff. Nice. It, it didn't sell at all. I think I had to buy all of it. <laughs> you had to buy got, all of it. <laughs> I got it because it was 7.3% alcohol in a beer, and that was unheard of back then. Back then, yeah. Do you remember that? I mean, now it's like standard. <laughs> yeah, standard is a oh, seven point three four we point thing. Old. Four the four uh, percent is is a low, and then oh, there's like eleven point yeah. six IPAs. That's insane. Yeah, we're old now. We are, and I drink this stuff, and it makes me go to sleep instead of party like I used to. Right. All right. Welcome back, John. Good to good to talk to you again. Thank you. Good to be back. Yeah, yeah. I always love having you on here. It's good to to have another person who is a, a Catskill lover and a Catskill know it all like you. Right. I mean, I mean, how many times have you done blood, sweat, and tears? Countless. <laughs> I'm probably probably nobody's done it more than me. That's true. Actually, I'll have to I'll have to ask that on on one of the social media platforms. <laughs> All right. I'd like to thank monthly subscribers, Darren White, John Comiskey, Vicky Ferrar, Jim C and Alan Betancourt. Thank you guys very much for supporting the show monthly. I really appreciate it. John, I don't have a, uh, a sponsor anymore. So uh, if you want to sponsor, you know, for like 80 bucks a, a month, that'd be great. I'll do it. <laughs> you know, I'm just kidding, but yeah, we, I don't have a sponsor. My sponsor, uh, apparently didn't like like me no i'm just kidding um my sponsor had problems so understandable i uh appreciate sarah you sponsor me for that long of time it was crazy thanks once again so john we already discussed what we were drinking that's cool so i remember you saying that you went on a previous hike i did overlook on saturday excellent how was it uh we did the uh entire round trip in t- exactly two hours uh, it was my nephew's very first mountain climb. Nice. So that was cool. He did great. He only had to stop once. Um, so he, he did great. We were uh, had a group of college girls that were kind of hiking tandem with us. And it was throwing me off. I didn't want to walk with, a, with, with them. Um, <laughs> so we got to uh, the, the hotel, but we kept going to the summit. We went to the summit first, and then we backtracked to the hotel. Very good hike. Didn't see any snakes, though. 
We got there at 7.15. We were the fourth car in the parking lot. We left at nice. 9.15, and the line was down the road. Crazy. Now, uh, what was your, your views like on the tower? Very good views. Last time I did it, when I did it with Dave Pritchard, we had no views. It was all fog, but we had very good views this time. Only the tower was, uh, was locked. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that, that happens, I think, after... Yeah. Uh, Memorial Day is when they open it on the weekends. So very good views. Jack loved it. And he even uh, he even said, so. uh, So what would I have to do to get into the Catskill Club? So I thought that was I didn't even prompt that. So I thought that was awesome. You started crying, didn't you? You're just like, "Mm." (laughs) well, I didn't want to get too excited too quick, but I was very happy just to be asked. But we're going to do Hunter next. He's looking forward to it. Where are you going to take Hunter from? Spruce Yes. I suggest you try a new route, John. I, I could. Yeah. I, I've always done the same one. Yeah. Go Becker hollow. It's, it's very steep. Uh, it's a, it's a nice little push, but it's shorter and you get views of the blackheads once in a while and stuff like that. So it's, it's, it's a hell of, it's a hell of a route. It's very, oh, uh, all right. All right. All right. I'll try to do that. Yeah. It's uh it, it's shorter, but it's also, uh, very steep it's one of the biggest gains in the cat skills but it's it's not like you you um you uh scramble or anything like that it's just a constant uphill it's you know think of uh remember at the when you turn on the horse stable uh on hunter yes think of uh you like that little gain part that's pretty steep uh think of that little gain for 2.2 miles all right yeah it's pretty sweet check it out I recently went to Bramley Mountain. Uh, if you if you have you ever been there, John? I don't think so. In Delhi, I have not. I know exactly where it is, though. I've not done it, though. Well, it's a it's a great hike. Uh, it's a future. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm just. We'll, we'll talk about some crap that I was just getting over. I just gotten over the virus, so uh, we'll talk about that in a sec. Um, but Bramley Mountain is in Delhi. Uh, it's a future place for a fire tower. They're going to be putting a fire tower there sometime soon. So it's going to be wicked. If you want to donate, there's a donation with the uh, Catskill Mountain Club, I believe, or just search Bramley Mountain Donation online. Uh, Pretty neat stuff. It's going to be a hell of a view, dude. That view looks over the Southern Catskills a little bit. Uh, You get to see uh, Balsam. You get to see part of Slide, Panther, a lot of, you know, the area in between Margaretville and Andes and stuff like that. Very beautiful spot. Uh, very easy hike. Anybody could do that hike. Awesome hike up. If you take a, the right trail, you go up and it's like a horse carriage road. Very nice. And then down, it's pretty steep on the other side. So it, it offers a lot of uh, varieties. Plus, John, if you're in the Delhi town, check out Strickland Hollow. Have you ever heard of that place? Did I tell you about that? You have told me about that. Yes. That's where I bought your, your Catterskill Falls uh, beer. Well, now you've muted yourself, John. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, now, now yes. you're not on. Now you're not on your Yeti. No, 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 no. There, there's a button on there right below the, right above the volume, and just press it. Oh. Okay. Okay. How's that? I'm gonna keep some of this on there. That was great. <laughs> Sorry about that. Why am I, oh, it's unplugged. Oh, there we go. Okay. I got to stop holding the microphone like I'm a rock star. <laughs> you are a rock star. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. So, yeah, Bramley Mountain was, was sweet. If you're ever in the Delhi area, check out Bramley Mountain. Also, check out Strickland Hollow. A uh, variety of, of liquors, beers, IPAs, whatever you want local. Erica has. Erica, a SAR team <clears> member. <throat> And she's uh, a local uh, right next to where I live, like 15 minutes away. So beautifully decorated cans. Yes, that is. Uh, was that the West Coast Brewing that uh, it was? Yeah, I think so. It's awesome. Yeah, good yeah beer, I got to get good cans. So, yeah. So let's. Uh, so I got some a lot of Catskill news, man. This is this is not really uh, this is not really like me. So I got to. So I got Catskill news, volunteer opportunities, John. We got a lot of volunteer opportunities in the Catskills. Uh, We got the New York, New Jersey Trail Conference Summit Stewards. 
check them out. My friend Myra runs that show. She is really awesome. I've had her on here before. She is uh, great with people, great with uh, interacting with the the hikers locally, and and she's a great steward, knowing about a lot of stuff in the Catskills. Um, we have Trailhead Stewards with John. Are you going to be one this year with me? I'd love to. Okay, we got to choose a Saturday because I know you're busy on Sundays, correct? Yes. So uh, Trailhead Stewards, you basically are at, for the 3500 Club at Woodland Valley and Slide Mountain. You're just a trailhead steward. You're basically teaching people the basic in and outs of, of hiking Slide Mountain and Cornell and may possibly Wittenberg. Uh, a lot of times I know that people have been turned around at Woodland Valley because uh, they think uh, Wittenberg is a simple hike. It's not. It's brutal. Correct? Uh, it almost killed Ian. <laughs> well yeah I, it, I mean you need to suffer from what, what was it called what does he had asthma yeah he has asthma so i mean but still it's a brutal climb it's it's got some some steep sections uh and then slide is also very underestimated everybody thinks it's a it's a piece of cake going up to the the summit of the highest mountain in the catskills but it's not when you're wearing tennis shoes or flip-flops and stuff like that and don't have any water so yeah, so check it out. Volunteer Opportunities, New York, New Jersey Trail Conference, Summit Stewards, and the Trailhead Stewards for the 3500 Club. Yeah, awesome stuff. I did, I think, uh, three or four days last year. I looked forward to doing it this year with some of my friends and some of my colleagues at the SAR team. So hopefully we can get that. So also, another story here. I know this is a little, it's not really adjacent to the cat skills, but it's very close. There was a moose relocated from Schenectady up to the Adirondacks. John, did you hear about that? I did not. That's awesome. Yes. So uh, on Facebook, I saw on the New York DEC website that somebody had heard about a moose traveling around inside Schenectady. Schenectady is a very well uh, popular area. It's uh, very, uh, how do I say the word? What is it? Heavily uh, populated. I guess that's what you'd say. Yeah. So, Moose there, uh, any sort of wildlife animal there would be very like weird, very odd. So a moose being there is extremely rare, extremely odd. So they originally saw it. They were kind of tracking it throughout the uh, Schenectady area. And all of a sudden, uh, apparently some little girl was looking out her window and the cow moose is out in her backyard. John, are you, are you seeing it? Are you seeing the screen? Yes. Do you see the moose thing? uh no it they the little the little girl saw it outside of her oh, yard nice. yeah crazy <clears throat> right and uh it was sitting in her yard just laying down oh, so man, what's the matter with it nothing it was just it was just roaming around and decided oh, okay. to take a rest so the dec were contacted dec moved in and uh I think they they tranquilized the moose. Of course, I mean you're not. It's not immobilizing a moose, a large oh, animal, okay. a bear, and stuff like that. It's got to be insane. So you know, a moose probably what is it around 500, 600 pounds. So just imagine that half the size of a car, insane. So they um, they immobilized the moose and then moved it up into I forgot part of the Adirondacks where they moved it up to. It was really really crazy. They. Uh, a yellow tag ear for identification purposes. Uh, once again, great work by the New York State DEC uh, relocating that moose up to the Adirondacks where it should be because, uh, you know, a moose in Schenectady is absolutely insane. A moose, even in, I would think an Oneonta would actually be pretty crazy, wouldn't you say? Oneonta oh, is not even, Oneonta is not even a popular, <clears throat> popular area. So no, it pretty much think, just have squirrels here. <laughs> squirrel we have a bear <clears throat> once in a while yeah that's true uh, yeah actually i gotta send you a picture um there was a a bear in oneonta eating out of one of my people's bird feeders uh, i'll send oh, you no a picture way. where was that at uh, I, don't I don't know, know. I, I, I don't know <laughs> I, I just know it was in oneonta okay that's that's pretty crazy um so yeah uh cool very story i'll post that in the show notes about the moose being relocated because it's a very awesome, very heartwarming story. Love that kind of stuff. Thank you, DEC, once again, for ripping it up. Um, so we also have some news about the fire tower challenge. 
So a new challenge has come uh, about. It's it's a different fire tower challenge than it was last year. Uh, it is now includes six fire towers. You got Balsam Lake, you got Tremper, you got Hunter, you got Overlook, you have Red Hill, and now you have the Catskills Visitor Center fire tower, which is a little one standing up right outside of the business center. Very easy, not really a hike, a walk into. So you got a new fire tower challenge going on. So recently uh, we were alerted by social media from a guy who takes care of the Tremper Tower and is also a volunteer steward up at the Tremper Tower. And he said the cabin will be closed due to repairs needed. So if you're looking forward to going up the Tremper, that's a great hike. Awesome hike from both sides from the Willow Creek Trail. And then there's from the other side, which is, uh, I don't think it's just named. It's just a um, Tremper Mountain Fire Tower Trail. But awesome hike up uh once you get up to the top though you're gonna you're gonna you have no view oh excuse me you have no views uh until you get up to the cabin or like the very tippy top of the the tower and this year on the weekends the tower is going to be closed due to repairs needed now it's very uh it's very how do i say this it's a very touchy topic because uh if it could be repaired. It'll have to re- be repaired by the visitor center because they hold the VSA, which is a voluntary service agreement. So if we, we would just, you know, usually a 3,500 club or maybe New York, New Jersey trail conference would go in and rip it up in seconds, because that's a big thing. New York state put a lot of money into this, but they can't keep their fire towers maintained. It's, it's, it's pretty sad. It's, it's definitely a hot challenge i gotta admit the 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 fire tower challenge exploded during the covid days yes yeah we did it i mean i did it i did it kind of be a lot of people a lot of my friends did it way before it even became a challenge of course and then you did it when it was a challenge correct yes yeah so we we've done it great hikes all over all around great views but uh if you're going in the the summertime or or right now i think it's Anytime beyond now, the cabin and the Tremper Fire Tower will not be open, which is disappointing because Tremper also offers a phenomenal view yes. of everything around. Damn, that, that view of the Burroughs Range. And then you look back over and you can see <clears throat> Hunter and all that that area right around there. It just it blows, it blows my mind. I have a post uh, probably a picture of it and uh, a little update about the Trumper cabin so people can be alert and aware of that. So what do you think about that, John? It kind of sucks. It does, but you know, I'm uh, still gonna, still gonna do it. Good call. Jack wants to do it. Correct. Yes. Yep. We've already started. Awesome. Hey, good luck to you. Thank you. Uh, I would, uh, you know, if, if you have, the, the chance, I know it's a little bit longer hike, and I know you don't like the longer hikes, but if you approach it from the, I think it's the Willow Creek Trail, let me uh, let me hear what Ja Rule has to say. We've got Ja Rule on the phone. Let's see what Ja has to say. All right. So, John, if you approach it from the, yeah, the Willow Creek Trail. That is a great hike. It's a, like I said, it's a little bit longer, but just gradual uphill instead of going straight up in crappy scree and mud and crud and stuff like that. So check it out. Willow Creek trail. Then you go up to Warner Creek. You take a left <clears throat> go Warner Creek trail up the top of fire tower, Trumper fire tower. Awesome hike, beautiful, nice walks. It was amazing. I, I did it with my buddy, Alex, and uh, he ripped it up. No, once again, he always rips it up. Uh, so I don't have any history. John, do you have any history? I, I don't, but I actually wanted to ask if you've heard anything about the annual dinner. Oh, that's a good one. I have not. I, should contact, I haven't either. I should contact someone about that. That is a great idea. I it, mean, almost, I could go. it almost feels like they're not going to have it. Seems late to not get word out. Exactly. Exactly. And you would, you think you would, you would have something out and about. Let me, uh, I will send a message to a contact. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, who put that floor there? Uh, well, oh man, that was incredible. So, uh, 
so John and I were at the club dinner last year to put, to, to put this in perspective of what he just said. John and I were at the club dinner. We were getting ready. Were we going over for alcohol or we were going I, over for food? The bar had just opened. Oh, so uh, it wasn't the food yet. It was the bar had just opened. So John and I sprinted over there to get some alcohol right away. <laughs> we had to. Um, and it's hot. All the, oh, it was it was warm, beautiful day though. Perfect yes. for a club dinner. Yes. And <laughs> all of a sudden we are thud, <laughs> and a guy like is like face first on the on the floor, and he gets up and goes, "Who put that floor there?" He, he was. <laughs> clearly already intoxicated <laughs> oh man was he probably wasted it was like it was the like the biggest thud i heard and when it's we turned loudest. around he, he just looks at us he goes who put that floor there <laughs> and i'm like well it's kind of been there <laughs> for eternity it was the loudest noise i've ever heard in my life yeah it was and you know i i and the funny thing is i ran over to him because i was genuinely concerned but right yes. after he said who, who's the, who put that floor there i kind of laughed so hard <laughs> oh he was all right though he he was a killer he I was guess. he was good people yeah yeah it was a great great time so if you're looking uh, i will get some word about the club dinner thank you john i will write that in the in the show notes club dinner right word? it's supposed to be on it's supposed to be on july 9th Okay, July 9th? Are you serious? Yep. That's so close. Yep. I know. Oh wow. Is that a that's a Saturday, correct? Yes. Oh right. So if you're looking to get your patch, please let me know. Maybe I'll make a uh shout outs if you so if you gotten your patch this year so far, uh let me know. Send me a, a personal message and I will congratulate you on the show or on Instagram or Facebook. Uh contact me, please. And congratulations on you guys getting your patches. Awesome accomplishment. One of the best accomplishments of my life, I would have to say. Same. Good. I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad. I don't know. Working at, at, at good old Walmart was, was kind of the biggest accomplishment. <laughs> wow, that's pretty sad. Yes, hello. Hey, you've made it a long time. Yes, uh, 19 years. It's. I'll be there till I die, probably. I'll have to be. Yeah, you're a lifer. Definitely. So... That's a good question, John. Thank you for that. Uh, the club dinner. I will find out some information. Hopefully, I will get it like right away because uh, that'll be the thing. And so, yeah. So I don't have any uh, Catskill Mountain history. Uh, sorry about that. I will look up some more stuff. I did have a a little a part about um, the Moore Bridge, which was on Route Twenty Three A, but it was a little bit too long, so I had to think about cutting it down. But I'll have to have John read that next time because John's a good reader. I'm not. I'll mess up stuff, right? Uh, well, I read for a living. Yes, you do. All right. So let's uh, break into the topic of the night. Bushwhacking. Let's go. All right. I hate so, it. Oh, God, John. And John hates bushwhacking. <laughs> but he loves it at the same time because we yes. find unexpected amazing things um so let's uh bushy whacking definition is what i like because it, it it's participating in guerrilla warfare and it's like a lights out guerrilla radio you got to turn that stuff up uh, you beat me to it yeah so actually definition of bushwhacking is the activity of living or traveling in wild or uncultivated country so we all uh probably know about bushwhacking if you don't uh you're gonna kind of have to if you want to get into the club because bushwhacking is a requirement to get in the catskill 3500 club uh we'll talk about that right now actually anyone wishing to become a member must hike the 33 designated peaks on the tally list and in a departure from the requirements for most other such clubs climb slide blackhead balsam and panther mountains again again in winter now with these club requirements come 13 total bushwhacks 13 i use with quotation marks because john knows uh some of them are questionable to be a bushwhack correct well the herd paths are pretty predominant yes uh definitely the herd paths are becoming uh i hate to say it but uh you know they're becoming real paths now yeah. um you know john john and i have hiked several hikes uh plenty without bush without herd paths 
And, uh, you know, it's, it's, I gotta admit doing a bushwhack, 100% bushwhack is an awesome feeling. You have so much accomplishment. You have a sense of being in the wild. You have a sense of just being alone with nature. And, uh, John knows that because, you know, I mean, I, I, I talk with John all the time. I, I just, I just talk too much on the bushwhacks. Don't I? Uh, no, no, it's not that at all. Uh, I just feel like I, uh, I don't have <laughs> the same amount of lung capacity as you have to answer. You can talk all day long. It's great. <laughs> that's, that's true. I do have a crazy amount of stamina and capacity to just not shut up, but it also makes for an entertaining day. But I mean, you got other people like Ralph and Joe and all of them who, you know, are, are pushing over their sixties and can still do the same stuff as I can do, which is insane. Oh yeah. They, they, they could, uh, they, they could bushwhack with the best of them. They're incredible with their eyes closed. Probably Ralph oh, yeah. can bushwhack with his eyes closed. <laughs> He's like, I remember the smell of the plane crash. I do. <laughs> that, that wouldn't phase them. <laughs> but um so bushwhacks uh also um the tally list for the 35 home club has changed in the past couple of years uh there used to be 35 now there's 33 double top and Graham has been closed to the public but if you hike south double top from the south you can kind of count that towards your uh your tally list uh plus it's an incredible climb uh, my friend Travis and I have done that and it was crazy. It was a good hike. A lot of nettles, nettles galore, freaking hate nettles. So yeah. So in the 3,500 ta- club tally list, there's 13 total bushwhacks. Now to me, Vly and South Pets Hunter aren't really bushwhacks. Nope. Yeah. Vly is kind of marked with uh blue markings going all the way up to the top. Uh, you, I mean, you can, approach it from any way but you can also approach it from the south and make it a true bushwhack but any way you approach it from the bear pen area uh from route three it'll not be bushwhack vly was the very first bushwhack i did by myself and i had zero problems which means it's probably not a real bushwhack <laughs> good good point good point um once again, John, John, John knows what he's talking about. And he, he knows, he knows somewhat bushwhack and I've, I've taught him some several things, but once again, fly and Southwest Hunter aren't really bushwhacks. And I got to admit getting on there, there's a lot of those, those bushwhack and peaks that are getting on that list of not really being a bushwhack. I would say like Rusk is getting to be a dominant herd path. Hockett, if you go the right way for Hockett, that's a dominant herd path and uh Catterskill high peak. Uh, you can make it a bushwhack, but uh, it's 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 pretty easy. John, we had that uh, we approached Catterskill High Peak from the south. Remember that? It was a good climb. Yes, that was one of my favorite climbs ever. Yeah, and remember that uh, that Karen that marked the turn. Yes, the the like seven right. foot Karen. Right. That was dismantled. Somebody dismantled it. I did not. The Karen cop. By the way, they called me the Karen cop for the <laughs> longest time. I used to knock over Karens. Do not build Karens. That's it. Don't build them. <laughs> One, like, like a lot of the, the, the trailless peaks are becoming trailed peaks, somewhat trailed herd path peaks. John, what else do you think is a good dominant herd path? Well, you already said Rusk, but I was going to say Rusk. When I did fly, we ran into, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. We ran into um, a guy, his name was Chris. And he was doing the um, he was doing the thirty five hundreds, and he told us that uh, he'd done the Adirondack forty sixers a couple times, and he said there's no herd paths left up there. Oh yeah, or, or, I'm sorry that yeah that, that all the uh, all the bushwhacks are pretty much trails now. I mean, yeah, uh, but the Catskills are seeing the beginning of that. It's exactly. happening here too now, um, where the herd paths are just so uh so predominant that i mean for people like me it's good but uh you know for to be a true bushwhack maybe it's not yeah it's uh it's it's somewhat disappointing i mean you could still once again you could make it your own bushwhack 
uh, if you travel from a different location. I mean, there are several parking areas that you can, you know, hike Rusk. You can take Rusk from a different uh, spot on the other side of maybe Hunter. Uh, you can go up to Hunter and then take a left and go over Rusk and East Rusk. Uh, Darren White took that late uh, earlier. Uh, thank you for that, Darren. He said it was a great time and almost a true bushwhack until you got closer to the summit of Rusk. There are several places you can uh, you can approach Russ from East Greenbush, which is pretty cool down in West Kill area. Uh, go over East Greenbush. That's a true bushwhack. Like, uh, you know, North Dome and Cheryl, you know, I got to I got to admit North Dome and Cheryl can be uh, pretty much true bushwhacks until you get to the top. Right, John? Yeah, they, they definitely were. And you would also found that awesome. Uh, actually, no, maybe I shouldn't even say that. that. But uh, Cheryl was uh, I actually thought that was pretty tough. I mean, I was probably just in bad shape. No, I'm um, going up from um, from Shaft Road, one of my favorite names of the road, by the way. Uh, ever. Uh, ever perfect. <laughs> um, you go up from Shaft, and it's, it's a steep climb. It's a really steep climb going up to, to Cheryl, and then it's a gradual gain going down from Cheryl up to North Dome. But, you know, there's there's several parts where you got to do some true bushwhacking. I I did it. God, I was last time I did it. I did it by myself, and uh, it was a true bushwhack for most of the time until you got up to the top. Of course, that's where the way they all are. And you know, you got yeah. You know, I should have probably went over all the true bushwhacks um, that we have left. So yeah. So. <laughs> So if, if you're looking to do the bushwhacks, you have Friday, Balsam Cap, Lone Rocky. Uh, yeah, we'll talk about that. Rusk, Hockett, North Dome, Cheryl, Southwest Her? Hunter, uh, Catterskill High Peak. I'm going off the top of my head of this one. Big Fur. Indian. Fur. There you go. You Hockett. got one, one more. Pocket. No, I, I said Hockett. Oh, okay. Right, we'll I, I put I, on my uh, on my thirty five hundred tally sheet form. I listed Rocky as the most difficult. Well, of course. I mean, I, I'd have to say that's pretty one of the pretty most difficult of them. Um. So also of those thirteen total bushwhacks, all thirteen have a canister. Uh, but there's one more with a canister, canister, and that's Eagle. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure they just put a canister on Eagle for data purposes because it's, it's right off the trail. There's a trail going up to both sides of Eagle. Uh, that's one of my favorite hikes. I, I love Eagle approaching anywhere from the balsam area. Nice flat. Once you get to the balsam, uh, the balsam call, the balsam Eagle or Haynes. Oh, excuse me. Haynes mountain call. Beautiful hike, flat. Flowers everywhere, beautiful trees, birches everywhere. Oh, it's such a good hike, John. That's uh, that's where our friend Jeff took a big digger, correct? Oh, yeah, no, he, I mean, his head bounced. Yeah, that yeah, was one of the worst falls I've ever seen anyone take. Yeah, and it was uh, scary for me because he's uh, he's a giraffe, <laughs> yeah, his center of balance, his center of gravity is very high, yeah. But uh, but yeah, so so all thirteen of those bushwhacks have canisters, and then there's eagle. Sign into those canisters, you know, uh, do a quote, do a uh, you know a, a little detail of how the hike was, uh, what's your favorite stuff like that. Give a shout out to anybody. I always put like a movie quote in there, or the quote of the day, or something that John and I do because we always have the same kind of quote going all the way up and down the mountain which is pretty sad it's like one quote or two quotes of dave Chappelle or jerky boys or something like that anchorman anchorman as well and then that that one time we did black Do or blackhead it was uh rad send me an angel <laughs> oh, that was great that was a good time so uh another uh a good topic to, to talk about uh, while talking about bushwhack is ticks. Um, of course, uh, with uh, bushwhacking, you're going to be pushing through some stuff, vegetation, uh, trees. Sometime you'll be pushing through the thick balsams, like when you go through uh, Lone and Rocky. Uh, once you go over to Rocky, you'll be pushing through some thick balsams unless you go the Goldilocks route, which is what I'm not going to tell you. So 
have fun with that. But if you also go uh, from different directions that you uh, are not normally taken, you will go through some thick forest. And uh, John and I have done that through several times. Uh, Balsam Cap, we went with Ralph that one time. That was pretty crazy. Yes. And I think it was, uh, I think it was Rocky. It was either Lone or Rocky. But I remember you were wearing a pink shirt. And you were about three feet in front of me. And I could not see that shirt. Yeah. Good spot. I love that spot. That's one of my favorite spots. So, yeah, once uh, you push through these thick vegetation areas, there's going to be ticks on the on the probably the trees or um, the nettles or anything like that. So a lot of uh, products out there to repel ticks like uh, repel. Uh, there's bug spray. Uh, I use permethrin. Permethrin's very good. Uh, last up to 10 washes. Spray it on. Let it sit. Spray it on again. Let it sit. Use uh, up to 10 times uh, through the wash. So pretty cool stuff. Repels them. Probably the best that I've seen. Very, very rarely have I gotten ticks on. And I've gotten ticks on the the hikes that have been actual trails. So it's pretty crazy. Pretty sad. Um, really, the tick, the tick population is out of control. And uh, there needs to be something done with it. We need to, like, nuke the ticks. Uh, I don't know how it is that I have not got a, a gotten a tick yet on on a climb, and we did just take. Uh, I took Ian's dog on uh, Overlook and um, thoroughly checked him for ticks afterward. Problem with them is some of them are so small they're hard to detect until you feel them. Yeah, yeah, until you and feel them inside you. And with a dog, like, you know, the dog can't tell you. So yeah, be careful. yeah, that's a, that's another good, good point. Uh, is what your dogs are traveling on these, uh, on these bushwhacks with you that you definitely need to have protection for the dogs. Um, and, you know, the flea and tick collars, I don't think work well, uh, as, as they should, but they do help. But, you know, I, I have, um, I have a, a friend coming on next week, Alan Via, and hopefully he will get us some some stuff about ticks that's a good idea actually i gotta throw that on there um but yeah ticks are a big big problem right now especially lyme disease is not cool lyme disease is pathetic i um love the permethrin too because you can treat your clothes with it prior to like you said you you can uh spray your clothes beforehand you can even wash it like 10 times because I'll just I'll sweat bug spray right off. Yep, does absolutely no good. Yeah, so the permethrin is very helpful. Yeah, definitely. That's a good good point. Definitely. Um, also, um, a lot of things you think about um, with bushwhacking. God, I, I I I layered this wrong. I should have put the ten essentials up there, but whatever. Um, so the ten essentials is also is top on the list, of course for any hike uh, so the 10 essentials appropriate footwear water food navigation sunscreen and insect repellent clothing layers first aid headlamp or flashlight matches and or lighter and tools so uh of course appropriate footwear def uh bushwhacks you know you're going to be stumbling all over the place slipping on rocks stepping on rocks stepping on trees stepping on nettles Definitely need traction. Water and food, most important thing, mostly on any hike possible. Water for hydration, food for energy. Um, navigation, we'll talk about that in a second. Sunscreen and insect repellent. I've never really used sunscreen that much. I have used it on uh, like the spring spring days when we don't have any uh, vegetation on the trees, any leaves on the trees. So, but not too many times I've used that. But insect repellent is a big yes. Uh, clothing layers, that's a big uh, uh, issue because, you know, at, at the bottom, it could be 50 degrees and at the top, it could be 30 degrees, maybe even cooler because of the wind chill. So definitely bring extra layers of clothing, plus also extra layers of clothing. If you get wet and you sweat too much, you can change up at the top and then have fresh layer, layer of clothing for, you know, warmth and, and coolness and stuff like that. First aid, should always have first aid. Uh, headlamp or flashlight definitely i i always carry two of those just in case headlamp or flashlight you never know 
when you're going to run into a problem and you have to either navigate during the night or, you know, you might get into some thick stuff towards the end of sundown some sunset area at this time. And you'll need that flashlight or that headlamp. Definitely very important. Um, matches or a lighter for fire, just in case you get in a sticky situation. Definitely have some of that. Very, All this is very light to carry. It might add up in the end. But uh, utility tools to cut that, you know, tree branches, stuff like that for uh, those tight times, you know, when you might need it, when something might happen. Um, so the 10 essentials. Yeah. So let's uh, let's break into uh, navigation. John, we have many uh, different kind of uh, uses for navigation, different devices. Uh, John, you carry a GPS device, correct? Yes, because I'm constantly fixated on elevation. Yes, not because of, of uh, navigation, but I taught you how to use one of those. So definitely one of the biggest things you'll need is a core map and compass. You always need a map and compass. I carry on uh, and every hike I do, I carry a map and compass just in case you never know when you're going to get caught in that situation, even on a trail. Well, the good thing about the GPS too, is that you can, you can ping your car. So if you get lost anywhere, you can find your way back to the car with the GPS. That's good. Yeah. And the GPS, uh, what kind of GPS you got? Do you know a Garmin? Garmin. Yeah, it's a Garmin. Okay. That's a great uh, device. GPSs are always good because battery life on a uh, GPS lasts freaking insane amount of times. So I'm, I'm pretty sure they can last like eight days, correct? Nonstop? Uh, yes. Like six to eight days. Yeah. The only thing that I, I just, I like, I've cracked and scratched the, the screen a lot. Oh, really? Yeah. But it still works. Oh yeah. It still works. It's just uh, messed up a little bit, but it's, I, I don't know. I think they're designed for that. Yeah. You can also uh, do text messages and yep. stuff from that, right? I get my emails. Once I get into service, that GPS goes off like crazy on the mountains. I oh, wow. my emails. On. Do you have a, do you have a, the, the GPS through uh, like as a monthly subscription or something like that? Or does it just go through like, how, how does that, that no. work? Do you know? So, so when I got, I got the GPS, I had to pay to download the cat skills. Okay. But once you, what you can like download your range and then, then it's free. Okay. Uh, I'm sure there's updates and everything, but I haven't done any yet, but I did mm -hmm. have to pay extra for the cat skills. Okay, cool. Yeah. That's pretty neat. So also when you have a GPS and map and compass, you uh, should probably check out how to read the contour lines in the map uh, of a GPS or a, a map, a comp, like a map. Um, very, very helpful to read the contour lines because the uh, closer they are, the steeper it is. The further they are, the less steeper it is. So it's very, very helpful to kind of find that less steeper route unless you want to do some, have some fun like we did up Bal Balsam Cap with some steep, steep shoots. But yeah, know how to read the contour lines in a map or GPS. I get my map uh, from the New York, New Jersey Trail Conference. Very awesome, amazing maps that are waterproof. Uh, and they have lasted me. God, I'm pretty sure I got them in 2015 when I started uh, hiking. So I probably, I need to update that crap. Jesus. Oh my yeah, God. Yep. Yeah. Lo lo Rocky's not even a, a 3,500 or, or anymore. Yikes. So yeah, on, on the map and compass and uh, a GPS also, you learn how to read those contour lines. There's several things on YouTube. Check it out. Uh, YouTube has very good demonstrations of how to read a map and compass, how to read a GPS, how to learn how to use them. I first started out, I first started using uh, a YouTube channel uh, for map and compass. Very, very good. I'll post those on uh, the show notes about that. So yeah. Once again, I said there's very many different ways to learn YouTube. Uh, Hands-on is definitely well worth it. If you're hiking someone that knows how to use Map and Compass, ask them how to use it. They will definitely teach you how to, to use a Map and Compass, and it's very, very helpful, very fun. Once you learn firsthand, you'll definitely get the hang of it. Uh, it's really cool to learn. And then also, uh, you know, get into the top by Map and Compass is a great accomplishment 
is a great feeling by just going by old times, basically. You know, uh, I know you, you also have, of course, you, your phone and stuff like that, but don't always rely on your phone because that GPS on the phone is not accurate. I've found it many times to be very inaccurate of where I'm like hiking on North Dome and it shows me on the other side of North Dome, which is not correct. So don't always rely on your phone. Don't always rely on those apps that you get. I know Avenza is really cool, you know, uh, Footsteps. Uh, there's other apps, Gaia. They are not 100% accurate. You know, neither is a map and compass, but I would rely more on a map and compass than I would uh, on your cell phone because the cell phone goes in and out all the time. We've done that several times uh, where I basically just, you know, I, I'm a, there's several ways that you could learn how to read a map and compass to, to read the map. Uh, I like to go on Google earth or Google maps and read the contour lines and to find an easy route up there um, that doesn't go over private property and stuff like that. I mean, I pretty much, you know, John and I hiked uh, with Ralph Balsam cap approaching it from the South. It was a longer hike, but you know, I was reading the contour lines perfectly to, to go up one side of uh, the mountain, go up to mini balsam cap. Some people call it mini cap. And then we read it up to go right up the the steep part of Balsam Cap on the other side. So it's about choosing the easy route uh, and the safest route, actually, getting up there. So, um, yeah, uh, map and compass, GPS, phone, GPS, have all those on you if you can afford it. If not, map and compass is probably the cheapest. Your phone is the most unreliable and the GPS is really good to have, but a little bit expensive on, on the expensive side. So, yes, uh, yeah, mine was four hundred dollars. Yeah, that's yeah. but and then people, you know, some of the times you have to pay for a subscription, right? Uh, a monthly subscription, you know, and they got GPS and they also have uh, personal locator beacons, which can can send out emergency signals and stuff like that for a rescue in case you get into a sticky situation. Um, John, does your GPS have that? I don't know. I don't know. I have to investigate that. I don't know. I I mean, I you can send text messages and I'm pretty sure yes. it might, but usually when you have a when you have a an emergency like a personal locator beacon that can set out an emergency signal, you'll have to play a monthly subscription, which is a little on the expensive side. But if you're gonna go into like the White Mountains and maybe the Adirondacks during the winter and stuff like that, you you might need that. So cat skills, eh. There hasn't been many rescues, uh, but there are times, you know, you go in the dead of winter, stuff like that. Um, you might need that GPS. So uh, once again, buy a map and compass. I will post on the show notes what I have for a map and compass. My compass is very reliable. I have to use that for search and rescue. So it's a very reliable, cool compass that will give you everything. So boom. So John. I'm talking about bushwhacks. What is your favorite bushwhack that you've done ever? Cater, Cater Skill High Peak. Okay. So talk about it. Uh, you get a little bit of everything with that one. Uh, it, a lot of it doesn't even feel like a bushwhack, um, but you get, uh, but, but some of it does. It's beautiful forest. You do have some nettles. But you get a little bit of everything. You get open land. You get rock climbing. You get awesome rock climbing right before the summit. Yeah. And then beautiful summit opens up to an incredible scenery. I think it was a little, it was a longer one, wasn't it? The yeah. Go High Peak. Yeah, it was pretty long. But um, it was my favorite because, well, for starters, you took the best picture of me in the Catskills. And um, it, it, it's just, it captures, that mountain's got everything the Catskill has to offer. Good call. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mud, rocks, yep. uh, balsams, rock, uh, you know, some scrambling. Right. Like Overlook, for example. Like Overlook's awesome, but it's just a rocky trail up to the top. Um, yep. Whereas the Cater Skull High Peak is a little bit of everything. Yeah. I mean, you first start out on, on a regular road, 
Uh, then you get on the, the muddy, crappy trail, and then you hit the snowmobile trail, which is mud and nettles and rocks and, and everything that you could eat, not want to do. Uh, you have multiple plane crashes. You go up the south access. It's, it's a very steep, awesome hike uh, that's very fun and very you know, challenging. So if you, you're going to go up the south access, make sure you do your research because it's definitely a very challenging hike. And then you can even go up the North Access, which is a, offers a great view of, uh, you know, Blackheads once you get up to the little part of top of North Access. And then, of course, you can't if you go to Catasco High Peak and you don't go to Hurricane Ledge, then you missed out on one of the best views in the Catskills. Definitely awesome. Phenomenal openness everywhere. And uh, just uh, what a great hike. That's a good point. You know, that is definitely an awesome bushwhack. I would, I would say, you know, like three quarters of that is not bushwhacking, but that, that little, that little time going up the South and North access, it can be a challenging time with yes. bushwhacking skills. And so, you know, one of my favorites that, uh, that we've done is uh, definitely the route to balsam cap from the South that we did with Ralph. So uh, you start from Pika Moose road and then it's a true bushwhack all the way to the summit. You do not see any herd paths whatsoever. So if you're ever looking to try balsam cap uh, and you want to definitely challenge, let me know. I will give you some details on that. You know, you go up through some beautiful viewpoints, some uh, little open prairies. I don't even know how to say it. It's scoured glacial areas with some glacial uh, erratics sitting in the middle of that. You know, I have a picture of Ralph st- sitting on top of one of them. Awesome hike. One of my favorites. Um, I mean, you can't, you know, you also can't uh, Lone and Rocky is a memorable hike. Very, very memorable hike. North Dome and Cheryl memorable hikes as well. Awesome viewpoints. If you know where they are, check them out. If you don't know yes, where they are. Now, I, I was, uh, I was nervous about North Dome because Travis told me, that that was his worst. Oh, so I was, was expecting very bad, but but he also said that you guys. He said when he did it with you that you guys just scaled some type of massive wall of. of yeah, uh, so we we approached North Dome. No, we did a traverse of that. So we approached it from Shaft, and then we went down uh, down the east side of North Dome, which is a very steep, one of the steepest spots in the Catskills, definitely. Um, and when Travis was coming down from the viewpoint, he kind of fell and tumbled probably a good 30 feet, but his backpack hit a tree. So it kind of like like abruptly stopped him. And if he didn't have that backpack, that probably would have hurt a lot. <laughs> was, he, was he wearing jeans? That was a jeans time, my friend. Uh, that's why. That's where I was wearing khakis, man. Yeah. All right. You leave the jeans and the khakis out of this, all right? <laughs> because those were the times. Did you what you wear when you first started out? Khakis. Okay. It was because of the pockets, right? Yeah. Yeah. They were I, like car they were like cargo pants. Yeah, yeah. I had some Jinko jeans. <laughs> yeah, I just figured I gotta carry some extra stuff. I better wear cargo pants with my sneakers. Exactly. Exactly. So, you know, I at least wore started off with hiking shoes, but I definitely wore khakis with a lot of pockets so I could carry more stuff. And then I also wore my band t-shirt. So I thought I was cool <laughs> climbing up and somebody would be like, oh, wow, Anthrax. That's a good band. <laughs> but no, it wasn't. Nice cotton shirt. Exactly. And then I would I would be at the summit shivering because I'm freezing my ass off because I'm yeah. not doing any myself any good with a cold wet cotton shirt good times though yeah. man memories yeah, they, they were yeah so learning, yeah d- learning how to properly climb it was fun exactly exactly and you know what you you live and learn and then get burned you do and you got some, like, some, some people even get that tattooed definitely that's not me by the way but yeah, so good good times of learning uh, to bushwhack. Like I said, I definitely learned uh, in the beginning from online, just on YouTube. There are simple YouTube channels that guide you through navigation, which is really helpful, uh, really fun, really easy. And then once you get the hang of it, it, it is a blast. 
I have led John on hikes that he wish he never went on, but to amazing viewpoints, to amazing places uh, that you would never see anywhere. I mean, remember that one hike we went on when we were at North South Lake and uh, we lost the trail and I was just like, let's go bushwhack through here. And we went through some like, like 10 foot rocks that were like caves and stuff. Yes. I think honestly, though, I think the worst bushwhack I ever went on with you wasn't even in the Catskills. It was in uh, is it the college when the when the pandemic first started? We went through uh, an entire like forest of pricker bushes. Oh man, that sucked. Do you remember? Oh that? yeah, that was uh, that was uh, Charles E. Baker State Forest. Yes. Woo man, that sucked. Yeah, that was that was my that was my bad. <laughs> kind of, I was just like, "Oh, we can skip this, uh, you know, half a mile here," and then we plowed through some pricker bushes. Nope. I remember I was plowing through, just like that's it. This is um, my this is my retirement hike. And uh, yeah, I took a great picture of you hating me. I've taken very several pictures of you hating your life through bushwhacks. <laughs> yes, um, they're great. Yeah, they have been good times. I gotta admit. So basically, uh, you have any questions about bushwhacks? Let me know. I kind of went all over the place with this. I probably should have uh, done this a little, a little bit easier uh, for people to understand, but hopefully they'll get a general understanding of, uh, of yay, 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 yay. Of, bush, of bushwhacking. And uh, once again, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, yeah, I say I hate bushwhacking, but I keep doing it over and over again because ex- it is quite, it's quite the accomplishment. Exactly. So that's, you know, that's another thing is when, like I said, when you, when you do it and you get to the top, you feel great. And once again, you keep doing it, you get better at it and uh, you find things uh, on maps and stuff like that, that uh, you wouldn't normally find. Like, you know, it could be, there's a lot of uh, glacial erratics that have those balancing rocks on it, almost like the hoodoos I saw in Utah. John, we saw we saw a couple of those off North South Lake and stuff like that when we were bushwhacking. Uh, we saw one of them on North Dome and Cheryl. That's uh, very uh, well known. Basically, like we can eat a rock up on Tab- on Peak of Moose Mountain. So, once again, you you see some amazing things. Once again, that uh, that you wouldn't normally see on a regular hike. You might see some stuff that. Uh, that is left there by humans, you know, 40, 50, 60 years ago, maybe even more, you know, old hunting camps, old, uh, old places, you know, it's, it's crazy and it, and it's fun and familiar but, faces. Yes. What was that from? Uh, I think it's an REM song. Oh God. Good call. Good call. So excellent. Hopefully, uh, you guys didn't get too confused with this uh, session on bushwhacks. I was all over the place once again. And I forgot to tell you, John, I just gotten over coronavirus. So yes. Uh, yes. That I knew. Yeah. That was pretty fun. Pretty crazy. <laughs> but so I, I was all over the place. So thanks, John, for joining. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Love it. Yeah. Um, and uh, if you have me back soon, I'll have more hikes to talk about. Actually, I just uh, looked the Otsego Outdoors listed me number 10 on the Spring Octet, Jack number 11, and Ian's Dog Buster number 12. What number am I? You're number four. Four. And nice. in the winter, on the winter one, you and Alex were the last ones. You were like 168, 169. Oh. 69. Uh, that was cool. <laughs> 69. But uh, yeah, so cool. Cool. So I'd like to thank every the donors, the monthly donors. Thank you very much. Thank everyone who's donated towards the, the show. I appreciate it. Uh, thank everyone who is listening. I really appreciate it. I hope you guys are getting a kick out of this. Let me know if you want to hear about anything or something like that, and we'll throw it on here. Uh, subscribe on any platform. Uh, look me up on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and I have a website. If you have the time, shoot me a review on Spotify or Apple Podcast or whatever platform you use. John. Thank you once again for uh, for joining me. Yeah. All right. You have a good Thank night. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank you very much for having me. Yeah. You have a good night, man. Take it easy. Hi. 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 Hi.